So I think that's the main reason you've, you've been invited here. So since um, this is an investigating, investigative hearing, you will be required to be on oath so that everything you say we assume will be um, subject to judicial interpretation if need be. Thank you. And Deputy Clark, please. It is much, Mr. Chairman, uh, and the members of the committee. Um, like I said, my name is Innocent Ike. I'm the acting managing director of uh, Polaris Bank uh, Limited. Just um, uh, in response to um, the letter, we had also uh, made a written submission. And I'll just quickly go through uh, that written submission. Um, in 2016, precisely July, the central bank dissolved the board of the SY Sky Bank, and a successor bank, Polaris Bank, came um, into being to take um, over the assets and some certain liabilities of um, the SY Sky Bank. Now, the reason for that intervention was because of breach in certain prudential issues, um, corporate governance issues as well as the fact that the bank also had a very glaring liquidity issues. At that same time, the bank, amongst other things, was unable to honor the directive at that point in time by the federal government to remit all government funds to the TSA account, inclusive of the NNPC funds. So when the uh, new board and management came, uh, into being, it was one of the challenges that we had to deal with at that point in time. Um, we engaged the various government agencies, you know, set up um, to deal with, um, um, you know, the the, uh, the banks that were not able to honour that um, obligation at that point in time, including uh, the EFCC, the uh, I mean. Um, the House Committee actually on Treasury Single Account, the Senate Committee of Banking, as well as um, the Presidential Committee um, of, on Special um, Recovery of um, you know, um, well, Stolen or Looted Funds. And at each of those engagements, we had made written submissions stating clearly that the money in Polaris Bank, so the day at um, Sky Bank, was money that was deposited in the normal cost of business. The account relationship actually started early in 2012, okay, with the first transfer of about $30 million. And then, subsequently, some more money actually came in. So it was a normal banking relationship. But then, when TSA instructions were issued, the bank was not able to remit the money as directed because of liquidity issues. And the liquidity issues really arose because those deposits, of course, I mean, um, the bank in the markets of financial intermediation had lent out money, particularly to the oil and gas sector. And because of the challenges that that sector had gone through earlier on, so customers were not able to pay back all the money at the time it was required to enable the bank you know, to return the money. So we did explain this situation to the various committees uh, and the government agencies that we met, and we, um, including the central bank who was, of course, copied in the course of all this um, engagement. Somewhere along the line, I think precisely December 2018, the federal government, of, um, the federal government actually, through the now disbanded Special Presidential Investigation Panel for the Recovery of Public Property, instituted a suit, okay, um, federal government of Nigeria versus Polaris Bank, when the details are provided um, in that report, um, on this same matter. Um, we appointed the firms of Fallon and Fallon to um, you know, handle the case and represent us you know, in the process. However, in 2019 February, in demonstration of our commitment to begin to repay that um, uh, deposit, we made a proposal to begin to make an instrumental payment of $10 million monthly. And we actually started that payment from that very uh, month. And because the federal government, you know, found merit in our case and our commitment to begin that payment, subsequently the government agreed 
that the monthly payment should be entered as consent judgment. And it was so done. We have attached a copy of that consent judgment amongst um, you know, the documents in, the, in this pack. And um, we started that payment as um, agreed and entered as consent judgment. And we are glad to state that as of today, as of today, as I talked, as before this honorable committee, we have made a total payment of 224 million, 324,958 dollars and 75 cents, which was the outstanding as of February 19. Sorry, as of February 2019. Today, we therefore have nothing, not a dollar, not a cent, outstanding in Polaris Bank in favor of NMPC or NAPIMS. So we fully repaid that amount of money. We don't have anything outstanding in our books. We have attached um, as our next to various um, um, documents, including the consent judgment, like I earlier on mentioned, evidence of remittances and payments to NMPC, uh, letters written to Central Bank to transfer money to um, uh, NMPC, as well as the various representations we had made, I mean, we had made to various um, you know, government agencies that had, at one time or the other investigated or looked into uh, this matter. Um, Mr. Chairman and members of this honorable committee, um, from our perspective, we like to state that the money that was um, with Polaris Bank, or, I mean, um, um, Sky Bank and subsequently Polaris Bank was money you know, kept or deposited in the bank in the normal course of business. There was no money taken in the normal course of deposit taken from customers as it was at that point in time um, allowed for government agencies to uh, maintain accounts, you know, with banks. And when the instruction was given to remit the money, we simply could not pay because of the liquidity challenges the bank has had at that point in time. And we, you know, as a very, very um, responsible organization, we engaged all the various government agencies, and we disclose this amount in our various correspondences, um, you know, and we have also gone ahead to make those payments and have completed that payment today by the grace of God. Therefore, uh, permit me sir, to conclude that the money deposited, or that was Sky Bank and Polaris Bank, was at no time hidden from anybody, any government agency, nor even including the owners of, owners of the account, NNPC, or any of the government agencies. And therefore, we do not believe that it should be classified as looted funds at all. We have, um, like I said, attached all the various documents, the correspondences, and all the submissions we made at various times. Um, so this is the summary of our submission. And um, I'd like to thank um, Mr. Chairman, the Deputy Chairman, and members of this committee. Tell me now, USD. The most they gap. So how long does it take to reconcile? The economy, um, apart from transferring from our nostril, I mean, so offshore account, USD domestic account deposit cash we collected, we also remit it to the central bank. So when we pay it into the central bank, we will also give the central bank an instruction to credit um, uh, NMPC. We had adopted that same. Um, you know, uh, methodology based on a um, on discussion with, N with NMPC and, um, uh, and CBN to make the payment of 23 billion, which was made, um, which I next show is that, can you just quickly? 23 million. So we, that way we, we had adopted the same methodology in making the payment of 23 million. And then we, in March, we also made this 32 million. What has happened is that I will have sent letters um, to the central bank asking that the money be credited to um, NMPC. So obviously, NMPC has not taken uh, that into consideration. But we wrote the central bank, we get the instruction, and we had at all times copied the NMPC. So in our books, really, um, we have actually paid the money. But I believe that NMPC will also be in a position to, to clarify and to confirm, or even the central bank um, as it were. This is the March letter. Okay. So, um, your annex 9, Mr. Chairman, yes, if I may draw your attention to annex 97, you would see a letter to address to the central bank 
um, of Nigeria, where uh, we had requested for the sum of $32 million cash lodged in the central bank to be credited to NMPC um, TSA um, account. Same approach was used in making an earlier payment of $23 million. They are because we want NMPC to actually now confirm and write us so we can be on the same page. But we have given the instruction to the central bank in March. Yeah, from what an NPC wrote means they haven't come. Um, we have also written back, which is the last letter yeah. that we have also written. Dated, uh, this, what is it? Dated, this, dated, yeah, dated 21, uh, where we have confirmed that the 32 million dollars had earlier on been paid and um, attached the same instructions that we gave to central bank at that point in time, and also as well as confirmed the payment of the residual balance okay, of 522, $27,000. Uh, five thirty-four um, uh, dollars and then ninety-six cents. For how long was this total fund in your custody? The NMPC fund. Yes. For how long was it in your custody? So the first um, um, deposit, like I mentioned, came in um, January twenty twelve. Twenty twelve. And then subsequently, you know, some additional funds, you know, came in, and so the, the balance grew to this amount. Um, you know, that has been. On. When were you instructed to transfer the fund to TSA? I do not know the exact date, but that proceeded even before we came on board. That was, like I said, that was the failure to honor that um, directive was one of the reasons, you know, for the, even the regulatory intervention, because the bank was already having liquidity issues. Okay, whenever you said. And in your position here, you claim that those funds were borrowed or given to customers as credits. Which means you made money. Let, let, let him answer. Uh, let him answer. You, you can't answer for him. Uh, so what's your answer to his question? We, lend. we therefore lent some of those monies. No. Correct. It's expected. Yes. Yeah. Uh, did you, did you, did you that, which type of deposit is that money? Which type of deposit, deposit is it? The deposit from NMP. Which type of deposit is the money? There are different types of deposits. Which type of deposit is that money? If you look at the statement closely, sir, what's that? Two. And, okay, the next two. Mm. If you look at it, sir, um, you will see um, inflows and you see descriptions that said interest, credit interest capitalized. So there was interest paid all through. Okay, can we have the, the amount of interest paid on that, on that loan? What happened to 2012 to the date? We can, well, I mean, we can sum that, I mean, we can. Uh, what the actual bet? I mean, for 30, I mean, for how many years? Several years, sir. I can't. Uh, it's years. good for us to know the amount of interest paid on the money from that period. This is a, this is a five yeah, or six page. There's a CBA regulation on it. There's a CBA regulation on it. There's, there's a CBA regulation like on I said. it. And so it is necessary for us to. What you're saying now is that NNPC just kept money in your account, in, in your bank, for you to play with. They just made funds available for you to, to trade with. with pretty little return to, to the Federation account. Is that what you're saying? Deposits from customers. We took NMPC had deposits, and we took just like every, every other bank that had the opportunity of doing so. And we kept to the uh, terms of the, uh, the, the, the relationship, and we paid the interest, sir. Just to the rider to what the chairman said last. Can you recollect? If NNPC was operating this particular account before this deposit came in, let, let's, let's make it interactive. Operating this account before this deposit. Uh, based on inquiry, was to go back to the statement of account. We could see the account, started, you know, um, in January 2012. Um, there was no transaction prior to that time. So uh, there was no transaction prior to that. The, the NNPC could have maintained all the accounts. They could have, but for this particular account, came into being January, and like I said, the first deposit there was a start, sum of $30 million. Uh, yeah, on oath. The question again, was NNPC operating this account before this deposit entered that account? Yes or no? To answer, except I investigate, and I've said, I wasn't there then. Something on something. We cannot build something on nothing. Um, the foundation to be laid here is whether NMPC was operating that account before this, because if you are not operating an account, how would this chunk of money just enter such an account? 
I'm taking you up on this because you have just told us and trying to defend NMTC that the money just came for you to, to have to kind of to, to transact business. And I'm sorry, it's something you weren't aware of and then you are defending. That's why I'm taking you up on that. That's number one question, sir. And I'm glad you have said you are still coming back to give us answer to that. Mr. Chairman, we need to know with certainty if this account was under operational before, that is prior to this deposit. Otherwise, we assume that it was a sludge fund deposited into that uh, bank's account. That's no, that, no, you have said it, sir. You, you know, you have answered me. You said you don't know. So just come. Honorable Ben, you have a question? I've not. I've Between 2012 and 2021, this committee wrote to you two weeks ago. Am I right with that, sir? And you paid this balance only on the 16th of June, 2021. Do you want me to assume that if this committee did not write to you, you would not have paid off this balance? It's um, for this committee that um, we did not pay the balance of $527,000 because the committee wrote. We had about 220 something million we're talking about, and we paid and continued to pay, and we paid $32 million, which was still outstanding. Because it was also a programmed payment, there was an agreement to pay $10 million on a monthly basis. We knew we were still within the time agreed. We did not pay because the committee wrote. We wrote, we paid because we knew we had a commitment to pay. Was given to whether another company, organization, or an individual. Are you aware of the kind of business the money was used for? That's one part of the question. The second leg is that what security, assuming Polaris did not take over Skybank, and um, what form of security did you meet on ground that covered? this chunk of money deposited and loaned out by an NPC? Um, the companies that we are uh, giving foreign currency loan were companies largely in two sectors of the economy. One was the um, upstream oil and gas, and two was the power sector. You would recall, Mr. Chairman and committee members, that uh, part of the government effort to try to boost electricity generation in the country was and you know um, drive economic activity in the, in, the, in the economy was encouraging banks to fund you know activities in that sector yes. and in terms of put oil and gas and um, yes and definitely as a bank uh, your your I mean your your, your comments are direct and accurate the facilities were secured with various some uh, have legal mortgage, as well as the assets financed. So from account to account or from facility to facility, they have different collateral arrangements. So we will go through the records and provide the names and as well as the amount and collateral that uh, were provided. Cool. Various arms. One is legislative arm, the executive arm, and the judiciary. And it is the position of law an issue has been decided, res judicata, by the court. Our hands become tied in going the extra mile with regards to that issue. My questions or our deliberations would have been different if the court had not intervened at the point the federal government approached the court and the judgment debt was established to which you consented to. Having done that, we can only operate within that sum decided by the, bank, by the court and accepted by you. 
in establishing whether or not there was compliance in fulfilling your obligation for repayment. Anything outside that will be superfluous. Therefore, within the mandate of this committee, what we are tracing is the money that belongs to the taxpayers, whether or not some of them are still with you, how it got to you. We will not ask you some questions that we would have asked if this matter had not gone to court, because I had so many questions until I read, which I put down, but I read that you've gone to court and you consented to the judgment. And you are here telling us that the whole payment has been done. Good. For me, I will not waste my time asking you whether or not it has been done, unless there is an evidence from NMPC contesting your position, which this committee will investigate. Having said that, there are certain things that we need to push out for establishments or institutions like yours to know. It is to my understanding that the financial institutions such as yours in your operation and in line with international best practices are usually secured by an insurance company or the banker's bank, what you call the banker's bank. Yes or no? It was right to give them the excuse of non-payment of loan by those you credited as an excuse why their money should not be made available to them to the TSA account when they needed it. Um, those who deposit money in the bank should be able to go home and sleep, trusting that the day they come calling for their deposit, they should get it. However, you have exceptions where either as a result of you know, corporate governance issues and or you know, um, some other is, um, external um, circumstances, the bank, you know, the loans go bad and the bank is on the bottom. That shouldn't be, that shouldn't be um, um, expected. I mean, that shouldn't be a normal thing at all, it shouldn't. No, my problem is, if you are insured, they're money back. So, do you think you acted in the best level of integrity as a financial institution? That depositors gave you money when they wanted it, you gave them flimsy excuses. Because to me, it's flimsy. You ought to have been secured. You ought to have been insured. This is to forestall future occurrences. And that's why I said just the National Deposit Insurance Company. Did they fail you? National Deposit Insurance will only be called in when the bank is declared distressed. But in this case, because of the breach of those prudential ratios... You're not answering me, who do you run to when you have problems as a bank? Who did you run the to? The first recourse is to the central bank. Did you run to them? Yes, the bank did. I wasn't there at that point. Any evidence to prove that? Why I'm highlighting this is because most banks are very comfortable to play games with it and then release it whenever they want to. And it ought not to be so. If you, if you it's the taxpayer's money that is given to you in, on trust. The question becomes, who did you run to when you had problem? If you permit me, sir, I would like that every responsible bank makes the point of duty to ensure that it honors its deposit obligations. One. Two, the federal government deposits, okay, uh, I mean, including both private sector and federal government deposits. I would not agree, sir, okay, that um, the banks are careless when it comes to federal, I mean, federal government deposits. The truth is that once the bank is unable to meet its obligations, it affects both private sector and government deposits. However, it will now depend on the amount of deposits the customer has. Retail uh, customers would, of course, easily be able to, and banks can easily be able to pay them one million, two million, three million. But when the funds are huge, it becomes more difficult for a bank in distress to deal with. And um, like I said, the regulator was aware of the challenges Sky Bank at that point in time, or the SY Sky Bank was having meeting depositors' obligations, which was why, part of the reasons why the regulator intervened and dissolved the board. Uh, MD, MD, I, th I think um, they are concerned because we're investigating the status and of our management of assets. 
And our major concern now, as it concerns you, is actually trying to find out what happened to that fund between 2014, 2012, when it was deposited, and the period you had to be taken to court by the Special Presidential Investigation Panel. You have about six years in which this fund was, mis was in your custody without ownership. Even though the question is not directly at you, it's directly, you know, your problem is just that did the NNPC forget this fund in your custody? Is it possible to forget almost 300 million US dollars of public funds in an account that is not money? Because from your own um, statement, you have said that the account was not operated for a long time. Was it forgotten in your bank? The, fund, or the funds were forgotten in the bank because the account was active all through that period. Um, if um, you look at the account statement we provided, like I said, we had the first deposit um, January, I mean, January 3rd, 2012. There was another one June 12, 2012. There was another one August 2012. And up to, um, I think up to 2014, deposits were still being made. Um, and uh, even, so withdrawals started happening um, sometime in 2019 when we started making the payments. So it wasn't forgotten. No, no, withdrawal did not start until has the Special Invest and Presidential Investment Panel started ask, dealing with you. Withdrawal started when you started repaying. Isn't that true? Yes, so withdrawal started when we started repaying. Actually, sorry, that was, um, that was in 2015. That was when the first, I think, the first um, withdrawals. Even, no, no? Please look very well. No, even 20, there was May 2014, there was a withdrawal. Um, sorry, let me just... Um, Quickly. So I can see from the statement, I think the last deposit was 2013 June, or thereabouts. So there was, um, from what I can see here immediately, Mr. Chairman, uh, without having gone through uh, diligently, uh, there was a draw on May um, 8, 2014. That was $50 million. And then there was another one, there were a couple of others in 2015. And, um, um, and that was it before. Um, the intervention uh, took place. When was this account opened? Account was opened again um, January 2012. The first deposit was um, 30. This was well calculated. No, there's a statement that the first deposit was 30 billion. Like I said, there were subsequent deposits and um, um, thereafter uh, withdrawals. Um, I want to believe the interest was well calculated because uh, we run an automated system. Nobody interferes manually. So I want to believe it was well calculated. But it's subject to validation. No, no, if you said interest was calculated, that means it's an agreed interest rate. Do you have interest, agreed interest rate for the USD deposit? It's, it's um, a current account. So um, except I confirm it's subject to one, I mean, interest on current account is subject to agreement. So I do know that at the point, I also do know, I mean, having been around that, there was a time when the government said banks should make sure that they pay interest on government deposits. So even if there wasn't anything specifically agreed, it was possible that the bank had engaged an NPC and, um, and started paying interest. But I don't have that record here. Yeah, because that's, that's the gray area that we're trying to understand for this deposit. Mr. Chairman, I don't have any um, rights here, but I can... Look into the no aware, and like I said here in writing, I'm, saying, I'm not aware of that. And as we have said in writing, there was never a time the disclosure of this, I mean, the existence of these funds was hidden from any government agency at all. And like I said, including the House Committee on TSA, there has never been a time. Um, since we got on board after the dissolution of the old board, we had had engagement with several government agencies, this presidential investigation panel, EFCC, uh, the SIP, Senate committee. There has not been any time where the existence of this fund was hidden and or not disclosed in writing. Anyway, uh, Mr. M. explained that um, you were yet to finally pay off the total uh, indebtedness, which you said you have paid, but we don't have evidence, we don't have any confession, confirmation from CBN. So we require that you furnish us with that confirmation as soon as you're able to get it across. Oh.
special prosecutor, special presidential investigation panel. I want to, if the MD of the bank, the Polaris Bank is not aware, I'm now informing him that the bank was, they were arrested before they confessed to keeping this money with them. There's a case file on this issue. It was when some members of the money was brought to the panel that they confessed that truly the money is with them. Um, uh, Mr. Ajama, we would like to do it on the facts. We, we, you know, well, thank, you, thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, from CBN, as well as the relevant agency, the NMPC, and uh, on the basis of that, discharge them to go, not acquitting, so that when there is no confirmation from um, this uh, NMPC or CBN, to support what they have alleged, we may re-invite them so that we can attend to other um, other banks who are here. here. I, I, so, I so move, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, this committee has decided as follows. One, that um, Polaris Bank will present evidence that the fund has been totally repaid to NNPC and then any confirm we would like to have confirmation from NNPC and from CBN, and then we'll give you five working days to get it across to the committee. Um, I think secondly, we're going to invite NNPC as well, because there are questions for NNPC to answer, for especially us, for the management of this fund. Could you have deliberately left almost $300 million in an account and left it unmanaged for this number of years. So we need to invite them there. So I saw rule that the two, the NMPC is invite, be invited by the Secretariat and that the bank is given one week to give us evidence that they've made the payment.